welcome back to another video here on free will photos today what we're going to be doing is looking at a portrait that i shot in a museum under low light conditions this is a common occurrence and knowing how to edit those types of photos is extremely important so that's what we're going to do now if at any point throughout the video you find value smash the like button if you're new here consider subscribing so that way you can see more content don't forget to comment if you got questions and if you want to save a little bit of money when you pick up on one photo raw or something else over at the on one store consider using my coupon code freewillphotos20 now let's jump into the computer and get to editing this low light portrait okay so here we are inside of the computer this is just a photo that i shot of my daughter now i will note that this is a raw image all right if I click on the info here, you can see that it says raw. You can get similar results with a JPEG, but whenever you're photographing in low light and, and you have time to edit the photo, I recommend that you shoot it in raw because this is going to give you the best results and the most flexibility in the post-production editing suite. All right. We're using Photo Raw 2024 here, as I've already said. And one of the cool things about Photo Raw is using Brilliance AI. I am still at the time of this recording kind of working through what I think the best settings are, but I think I'm starting to hone in on what I like the most about using these types of settings. Now, here's the deal with this portrait. It was shot in low light and I still want to keep that dark atmosphere and environment. So, uh, you know, we'll see what portrait AI comes up with. This is what it uh, rendered. Here is what I came into the editing bay with, and this is what it rendered. Now, I like how it brightens face a little bit, um, but I'm not, a, I'm not as enthused about what it's doing here in the foreground with these two, I guess, uh, windows. I don't know exactly what this is. Uh, whatever. I'm not a huge fan of that. I actually like how they looked before, um, but I do like what's happening in the background here. So this may be one of those instances where Brilliance AI just isn't the tool that I want to use because I really only want to focus in on this area back here. So I am going to take a peek at the tone and color. And this is one of those power tool or power tips, if you will. Uh, if you find that you like certain aspects of what Brilliance AI is doing, well, why not use the results that it's giving under the tone and color uh, panel Take note of that, and then you can build this out inside of the local adjustments. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. So, like I said, I enjoy what it's doing in the background, and it looks like it's just pulling down on highlights, boosting the contrast a little bit, opening shadows, boosting the midtones, and it's pulling down on whites and blacks. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and turn off Brilliance AI. And I'll come back and modify my camera profile in a little bit if I feel like I need to. But since I enjoyed what I was getting out of Brilliance AI in this area already, then it's good to go. So I'm going to come over here to local adjustments. I'm going to add an adjustment. And I'm just going to reset this because this was already at zero. And I know that we boosted on the contrast a little bit. And what I'm going to do is actually invert this. So I'm going to click on my mask over here, come over to my little properties window and click the little invert option. That's going to put this effect over the entire image. So that way I could see how it's building up as I go. Now, what I'm going to do is pull down pretty drastically on these highlights, probably something like that. It doesn't have to be exact to what the brilliance AI was giving me. It just has to be something in the ballpark. Uh, I know that it boosted just a little bit. I believe it was actually eight of the midtones. We'll push those up just a tad. And then it also opened the shadows double what I noticed, at least in the Brilliance AI edit. It was double whatever the midtones was. Um, and I'm okay with that. Then where I think we started to redevelop that contrast, because I've said this in other uh, videos and live streams before, that as you open shadows and you brighten your image, you start to lose contrast. Well, pulling down on the blacks will bring back some of that contrast. And I don't think it came down this far, but I'm just, you know, I get to control this a little bit. So I'm choosing what I think makes the most sense for this particular image. So I'm just going to pull down a little bit more and I'm going to pull down on the whites here because that's what the Brilliance AI was doing. Now, 
The reason why I want to work inside of local adjustments instead of letting Bruins say I do this is because I want to mask this in just to this little area. Now, the cool thing about this photo is it's a big square, so it's going to be fairly easy for me to mask this in using the line mask tool, which is not a tool that I use frequently, um, or at least at le on this channel. I use it as it comes up, especially in photos like this. So what I'm going to do is click at the corner here, click up towards the top portion here, and I can readjust this later so I don't have to be like entirely precise. I just need to be relatively precise. And I think I'm actually going to come down a little bit further. I'm okay if the edit that I'm doing goes over this little area and I'll do something like that to close it off. And again, like I said, I can readjust these. So I'm just going to pull this up, maybe do something like that. Now I have the choice to either paint this in, paint this effect into this area or paint it out. If you don't know how to use the line mask tool, don't worry about it. Just take a choice of where you want to click. Since I'm on paint in or paint instead of a race, I'm going to tell on one. I want you to paint right here inside of this square. So I'm going to click there and you're going to see my mask preview in the thumbnail over here. It should update eventually whenever on one catches up with me. So while that does that, I'm going to get a sip of coffee. Okay, so the edit has happened and it's not as drastic as you may imagine it to be because we didn't make too many drastic changes over here on the left hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and click the checkbox and we're going to let that go. Now, this should have updated, but for some reason, the thumbnail did not update. So let me close this out because I want to show you what it's doing. Let me hit the letter O, C. Oh, okay. So it hasn't actually modified anything. Let's try this again. We're going to click on our line mask tool. I'm going to click paint and I want this to apply the paint. Now that is very interesting. So we're going to go ahead and subtract that mask and we're going to start this over and see if we can get this to paint in because that is the way it ought to be working. Okay. Well, the line mask tool has failed me. Let me click erase maybe. Okay, so we'll go with erase. Hit check. Now we have our little window in here. I was just misusing the tool. That happens from time to time. But you can see what it's doing. It's cutting out one little area. The problem is it is inverting what I actually want to paint in to this particular. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and invert this. And now you can see how I'm focusing in solely on my daughter. And I like what this is doing. If I turn this off and on, you can see it's just opening up that that area where she is. And it's making that the focal point. Now that I have a pretty decent tone and contrast look in here, I may actually push the contrast just a little bit more. And let's open the shadows just so we can get some more detail in there and then pull down more on the blacks because I, I still want this to be like a contrasty image. I shot this in the dark and I like the tones that I was seeing on the day, uh, at least at the time that I captured the image. So now I'm noticing that my horizon line is not completely straight. I'm going to hit the letter C on my keyboard and I'm just going to grab the level tool here and I am going to click and drag right over the window pane and that's going to straighten out the horizon make this not look so amateurish uh, if you will um, and that's not a dig at anyone who has crooked photos just know that if you need to straighten it out you can do that using the uh, tool in the crop window so we're going to go ahead and crop that and that's okay i'm okay with the crop i like the way that this photo looks now and I'm really good with uh, everything that's going on here. So now what I need to do is really start to drive the attention into my daughter. And there's a few ways that you can do this. Low light photography, it just lends its well. It lends itself so well to vignettes and uh, blurs, like dramatic blurs and things of that sort. So in my mind, I'm thinking, hey, let's just go ahead and add a lens blur and I am going to push up on the amount just a little bit and I'm adding this over the entire image right now 
primarily because I know I'm going to cut this out right here in the center. And I'm going to do that by using my masking bug. So we'll hit the little drop down here and we'll go with the, uh, we'll go with a gradient mask, even though I don't want to use an actual gradient. I want to use a radial. So I'm going to click on vignette, click right here. And you can see what it's doing already of just cutting out that area and making things make more sense. Um, I'm going to turn this slightly and this is purely subjective and whatever you want to do to your image, you should do that. Uh, now, if I grab my regular brushing tool to get rid of that overlay, you can see if I turn this off and on what it's doing and it's really just helping us focus in on my daughter. Now, this could be a little too strong. Uh, let me pull down on the brightness. So it's kind of like a vignette, if you will. And it is very intentional. I like what I'm getting here. Uh, so I think I'm going to go with that. One of the last things that I would probably do to this image is kind of work on the uh, overall colors in the image. I think that they look fine, but sometimes with, uh, I guess, darker photography or low light photography, colors can get a little askew. I'll go ahead and open up my color enhancer and I'm just going to throw in some vibrance and it's already a very warm image, which that's what all of these colors in here are. They're all very warm. But what I think I need to do is separate this warm tone in the back of my daughter or behind my daughter from her. And the way that I'm going to do that is actually by masking in uh, this particular effect. So in fact, I'm going to get rid of the vibrance and I'm going to come over to the yellow channel and I am going to pull down on the saturation. And this is just going to remove uh, some of that saturation from the overall image. And then I'm just going to mask this in. Uh, we'll pull the hue over and let's see what the oranges do. Yeah, we'll pull down on the oranges there a touch as well. Now, another cool way that you can modify the saturation of a color inside of on one is using this little picker tool. You just got to make sure that you choose adjust saturation. You click the picker tool and when it highlights in whatever your accent color is, you can come over to this area and you can just pull left and right and you can see that's targeting the oranges and I'm okay with that being desaturated a little bit because that's what I want. So now I need to invert this mask and paint it in only on that area. So I'm going to go ahead and click that uh, mask icon there, invert it. And then all I'm going to do is paint out or paint this in on that area. Better yet, just make it easier on myself. I'm just going to go ahead and click the mask this way. Uh, let's see if the AI tool will pick up on the people, which it does. So I can select her, my daughter, and then I can just paint out the effect, hit apply. So that way it doesn't actually go on to her. And you can see it does a pretty decent job. Now, anytime you use these AI masks, I highly recommend using some feather. So I'm just going to feather that in. So that way she, it, it kind of blends a little bit better. Um, now, overall, I feel like maybe I should pull down on the opacity because I need to make this look more natural and make her look like she actually belongs in this environment. I'm going to go ahead and copy this mask, come over to local adjustment, and I feel like she just needs to be brighter. So we're going to hit add adjustment and we're going to go ahead and paste that mask. And then I'm going to invert this and we'll pull up on the exposure. So that way she's a little bit brighter in the overall image, maybe about that much. Uh, we'll pull up on the shadows so we can open up some of that detail. But again, still want this to be in that darker space. We'll pull down on the blacks. And I think that is looking pretty good. So the last thing that I'll do, I do this in pretty much all of my images, is a vignette. And that's just going to help me. Actually, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, what we need to do is desaturate that background a little bit more. And in fact, I'll pull down on the brightness now that we have that separated a little bit better. Let's go to the yellows and pull down on the brightness there as well. Okay. So, and just making sure that that's feathered pretty good. 
Uh, if you don't feather your mask well enough, uh, you can start to get these halos and I don't want those in my image. So now we'll come back over to local and I got more local adjustments than I need. So I'll get rid of one and I'm going to, I thought I got rid of you go away. So now I'll use this one and we will get our masking bug, or at least I think we will. Eventually we will. There we go. Masking bug. Click here. Vignette. And I'll go with the same direction that I did with the lens, but I'll go a lot tighter just so that way the focus is more so on my daughter, something like so. And I may actually pull this out so it fades a little bit faster or I'm sorry, a little bit slower. And ultimately, I think that this is the look that I would go with. So this is what we came into the editing bay with. And this is what we are walking away with. I think that this looks really, really good, focuses the attention onto my daughter. And, you know, you could do so many more things, but for practical, realistic edits, I think this works. So hopefully you found some value in this particular video, low light photography. I'd love to hear your comments, ways that you address low light photography in your own images down in the comment section below. And if you have questions about what you could do with an image like this inside of on one, just let me know and I'll see what I can do to produce a type of content that would help you with that. So until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.